Hi, I'm Steve Weierman, and this tutorial is the first in a series of more advanced Java tutorials. Uh, if you are looking for something more basic, I suggest you watch the Getting Started with Java tutorial series, as well as the text editor tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be talking about recursion. Recursion is one of those topics that sometimes uh, students struggle with, uh, especially when they first see it, but it's really not a terribly difficult topic. Uh, recursion has to do with uh, functions calling themselves to figure their results or to accomplish a task. So in this example, we're going to use uh, two mathematical functions. So I'm going to call this math functions. And we're going to implement functions for factorial and for Fibonacci sequence. So factorial is just the product of some number uh, with every number below it, every whole number below it. So the factorial of, say, um, 1 would just be 1. The factorial of 2 would be 2. The factorial of 3 would be 3 times 2 times 1. The factorial of 4 would be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and so on. Uh, so it's not a terribly difficult uh, concept. Uh, what we're going to take advantage of is the fact that the factorial for some number, we'll call it n, is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times all the way down to times 2 times 1. And what you might notice with this is if we take the factorial of n minus 1, that's going to be n minus 1 times n minus 2 times all the way down to 2 times 1. So what we have here in the factorial of n is n times this thing here, but this thing here that I have highlighted is just n minus 1 factorial. So we're going to compute the factorial by multiplying whatever number we're passing to this function we call it x down here. We're going to multiply x by x minus 1 factorial. And we'll do that only if x is greater than 1. So if x is less than or equal to 1, we're just going to return 1. That's the easy case. That's the base case. If it's not, if it's something else, then we're going to return x times factorial of x minus 1. That is our recursive case. It's called recursive because this function factorial is calling itself. So now in four very short lines, we have a function that computes the factorial of a number. So if I were to do something like uh, 
uh, say I want to print out 5 factorial, I can do that. And let's test this. Um, let's test this after I put in something here just so that compiles. So now 5 factorial is in fact 120. So now let's write our Fibonacci function. The Fibonacci uh, sequence is the sequence of numbers that starts with 1 and 1, and every number after that is the sum of the two previous numbers. So it goes 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and so on. All we're doing here is adding the two previous numbers to get the next number. So what we need to do is we need to return the base case. Base case will say is, again, if x is less than or equal to 1, we're going to return 1. Now, if x is less than 0, we would actually probably want to return an error. But for this case, let's just return 1. If it's not less than or equal to 1, then what we want to do is we want to return Fibonacci number that's just before this plus the Fibonacci number that is just before that one. So now we can do something like find the third Fibonacci number. Now let's make it more interesting. Let's find the fourth Fibonacci number. So the fourth Fibonacci number, keeping in mind this is 0, 1, 2, 3. The fourth Fibonacci number should be 5. And it is. And we can change this just to make sure it's working to the fifth. And we'll see what that does. So that should give me 8. And it does. Now the thing you want to watch out for with this is each of these calls takes up memory. Every call is going to add something to the program stack, and that is going to, that's going to eat up memory. With modern machines, with simple examples like this, it's not that big of a deal, but with older machines or with much larger numbers, say we wanted the Fibonacci number of uh, 20,000, that's probably going to cause me some trouble. Well, let's try it anyway. Yep, stack overflow error. So that didn't work out as well as we could have hoped. Um, and the reason why that's giving us trouble is because, uh, like I said, each of these calls is taking up stack memory. So uh, with 20,000, uh, we have something like um, 40,000 nested calls. And that, that's going to take up memory. It's not going to be a quick um, computation. Uh, let's make it something a little bit smaller and hope it works. So we'll make it 200, see if that's small enough to work out. And you see, it's not giving us any errors, but it's taking a lot of time to figure out what it's doing. Uh, so that's one thing you want to watch out for with recursion. Um, and the problem with this, like I said, is... Uh, partly because uh, with these calls down here, um, we have two calls for every call being done here. Um, and that, that blows up. Um, so that's going to take up quite a bit of memory. It's going to take up quite a bit of time. And we could wait for this to return, but I'm, I don't have the patience for that. So I'm just going to cancel that out. Um, but that's recursion in a nutshell. 
uh, use it with caution. Always make sure you have your base case. Always make sure your base case is something that will be reached uh, by your recursive case. I uh, hope that cleared some things up for you if you struggled with that concept in the past. Uh, it's an important concept, like I said, and it's a concept that uh, will come up in later tutorials.